Wait, is this just gate? Chapter 428. Written by Pepper Antique. James watched nervously as the carts came through the opening in the portal room of the castle. The original portal room, where he'd come into this world, not the new one that Velary and Marcos had set up their equivalent version, which was on the opposite end of the castle. The packages on the carts were huge. Each one was nearly five feet in either direction. Most of that was packaging meant to keep the large, highly polished, curved, mirrors inside from being damaged or dirted. But there were sixteen of them in total. Plus the lenses and the various support material to assemble it all. It came out to a lot of crates and boxes over the course of nearly a week. But these were the most fragile of them all. By now, the disappearance of stars was common knowledge in Petrovia. The patch of missing lights in the sky was massive now, and on a clear night a person could hold their hand up and not cover the entire empty space. It was almost as large, visually, as the second moon of the planet. And it was still growing larger every day. In fact it was occurring faster now. The scientists on Earth were tearing their hair out over it. In the Earth universe, the closest star was a little over full light years away. Which meant, for those unfamiliar with the concept, that even 80 light speed it would take over four years to get there. Moving faster than light speed was, at least in accordance with current understandings, impossible. And anything less than light speed would extend that journey by exponential factors. James was never as big on astronomy as other people. The idea of going into space was terrifying to him. But he was a SCI Phi fan. So he got the basics of the concept. None of them knew, at least not yet anyways, how far away the stars here were. But based on images from the drones, the few remaining MIFFY turret cameras, and a few other bits and bobs they'd pulled from the remaining desert gear, they estimated that the nearest star, at least that they could see here, was roughly five and a half light years away. The measurement would get more precise once the telescope and its attached computers and programs were up and running. But they had an estimate. Whether James understood the numbers or not, it didn't take a genius to know that whatever was happening out there, whatever was happening with Joey and the cleanser, was happening at a rate that couldn't be fathomed. Here they were crossing light years at a rate that Earth scientists couldn't even calculate. And they were supposedly on their way back. James accompanied the last of the mirror packages out the doors of the castle, and followed along with them as they crossed the courtyard out to the incomplete gate of the embassy yard. And it took effort not to look up toward the sky that those mirrors would soon gaze upon and try to see what was happening out there. Within a week or so the telescope would be complete and they'd find out for sure. Hopefully. All right, Amara. You're up. Vickers said as he read off the list of people on the list. The young Marine Corps Lance Corporal stepped up to the bars that had been set up in the embassy's back area and stepped up onto the side bars. Best anyone's managed is 62. You gonna let some Chair Force dirt bag show up the core on pull up Samara? Fuck no, Chief. The young man said as he gripped the bars. A few scattered hurrahs sounded out in the crowd. Hey, I resemble that comment. The Air Force sergeant in question joked from the recovery portion of the crowd. On the bar sets next to there's an army soldier and another marine were being scored by the XO and first sergeant too. On three. Vickers said. One, two, three. Go. 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 He counted off loudly. Amara and the other two being tested moved in rapid up and down motions that would have been impossible on earth their magically infused physiology allowing them levels of strength and endurance unmatched by other baseline humans here on this world. Kill. 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 The amped-up marine said each time he cleared the bar. Beside him the other two kept up for the first 30 seconds or so. But once the count got into the 20s they all started to lag. At 30 the army soldier, Ogilar, struggled to get up to the bar and dropped back down before he completed the motion. Lieutenant Greaves marked it and shouted, and down. As she read his final count to him. Now only the two marines were remaining, and the other marine was beginning to slow down. But Amara was the stud amongst the jar heads in the company. His PT scores had been maxed since he'd left basic, and being in this world as long as he had had only made him even more capable but by the time the two of them neared fifty they were both shaking. 
Ra! 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 sounded from the marines watching from the crowd. Kill! Amara said as he struggled up. Come on Ma! Someone yelled. For the core! Ra! sounded the crowd, more voices joining in now. More than the small handful of marines present. Ra! 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 Kill! Amara squeaked out as his chin cleared the bar. The other marine, Holstead, managed one more pull-up, also saying, kill. As he cleared it. Then he lost his grip and dropped to the ground in a sprawl. He stayed there, breathing heavily as he shook his arms out. Others rushed over to help him up. 48 Holstead. First Sergeant Green reported. Good work. Come on Ma. Vickers yelled. That's 61. Two more. Kill. Amara replied. Ra. 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 The crowd chanted. Nobody was sitting it out now. Even the current record holder was in on it. Amara shook as he rose up the last few inches, making the 60-second successful pull-up and tying the record. The crowd went wild, but continued chanting as he dropped to full extension. Come on Ma. Several people said in unexpected unison. One more. Another yelled. Amara was practically vibrating as he rose up one more time, his shaking muscles were so overtaxed. The chanting stopped in its tracks as his chin got close to the bar. K, he began as he neared the bar, struggling the whole way. HRRNG kill. He screamed as he cleared the bar one more time. Four seconds over. Vickers thought just before screaming, time. But he can have M. The crowd went wild as the lance corporal dropped off the bar and fell to his knees. He rose two shaking arms over his head as he turned. Hoorah! He yelled at the crowd as they rushed forward to congratulate him. After a few minutes the first sergeant had to step in. Back in line! She yelled. We still got testing to do and the last thing you want is to be doing planks until it's your turn. She continued, breaking the celebration up immediately as everyone rushed to fall back in or fall out if they'd already tested. As she did the lieutenant leaned towards Vickers. That minute seemed a bit long there chief. She said quietly. Vickers squinted a bit. No idea what you're talking about lieutenant. He said as he looked at his tablet. Probably just how the intensity of the whole situation made it seem. Right. She said with a knowing nod. Then she whispered. Can't let the Air Force make the rest of us look bad, right? Hey chief. The specialist that had moved up to the bar said as they read it for their test. We need a new bar. No idea what you're talking about lieutenant. Vickers said with a wink. The Great Navy, of which the Marines are a part, never have to worry about that. The specialist handed him the bar, which unlocked and slid out easily. He looked at it, noticing the grip-shaped crush marks on it from where Amara had been squeezing it. New bar. He said to the two soldiers nearby with a rack of replacement bars. They'd been having this issue all day, though this was the worst one he'd seen. Amara. He shouted, causing the marine to turn and look at him as he finished drinking from the water cooler nearby. He tossed the bar at him. Souvenir. Hell yeah chief. The exhausted marine said as he almost fumbled the catch. Better hope none of these last few get a better score, or I'm taking it back. Vickers replied as he watched the next tester put the new bar in place. Greaves just shook her head. A bent rule here or there was okay if it kept the morale up. Though she was going to have to have Green get the army soldiers working harder if they were gonna keep up. Near the incomplete section of wall nearby, the Petaravian guards looked at each other curiously. What's the point of that exercise? One of them, a Histian, asked. They'd both been wondering it the entire time. And what is RAH? The other guard just shook his head. Weird earth things. He replied. I've learned not to question it. Or get involved. Yeah, same. The Histian agreed. The room went silent as Samantha approached. 
she knew they could hear and smell her coming. Just like how she could smell that the coffee was beginning to burn in its carafe. When she stepped in all eyes were already on her. Mrs. Ramirez stepped to the side of the podium, she had been talking when Samantha had approached. Hey everyone. She said as she entered. She gestured for Mrs. Ramirez to go back to whatever she'd been saying as she took an unoccupied seat near the back. Are you okay dear? Mrs. Ramirez asked. I'm fine. She said with a plastered on smile. Please. Continue. Mrs. Ramirez moved back behind the podium, and began talking about how she and her husband were planning on bringing in some flowers from their shop for anyone who wanted some for their rooms, but Samantha couldn't really hear any of it. She kept noticing how everyone was glancing at her. How their ears would flick her way any time she moved or made a noise. Some of the back row wolves, who she was sitting next to, weren't being coy about how they were looking at her. Brighton said that the sexual assault response coordinator spoke to them. She remembered. Right at the same time I stopped coming. Do they suspect me? Or Fletcher? The thought that they might suspect her of being the one that did it hurt. Especially since they were right. But the thought of them thinking it might be Fletcher, a man they were supposed to trust for legal counsel, hurt even worse. It was even worse since a lot of the wolves already had a distrust of anyone outside the pack. It was a low level, at least for everyone not here in the back of the room, but they were still wary of humans. The last thing she wanted was for that to be amplified toward Fletcher, who she knew was their friend. Then she smelled him approach the room. Could smell the product he always put in his hair, which had a faint lemony smell. The other wolves smelled him too, and she saw several of their heads turn that way. But he stopped at the door, and she could hear him breathing there on the other side as he looked in through the small window. She could hear the low rumble emanating from a few of the other back row wolves, and felt the room grow tense as Mrs. Ramirez once again stopped mid-speech. Stop. She said. She didn't even expect it from herself. The word left her mouth before she knew what she was doing. Everyone stop. The others looked at her, and she froze as she realized what she'd done. I hate that we actually are a pack. She thought, though not for the first time. She turned toward the door and saw Fletcher look at her. She stood up and gestured for him to come in. Mrs. Ramirez moved aside as she made her way to the front. Fletcher quietly opened the door and stepped inside, then stayed against it as it shut. His inherent survival instincts were pretty good for a lawyer. The all the wolves were watching him, and a few of the back row wolves were still a little puffed up. Guys! She said as she stepped up and took the podium. Leave him alone. He didn't do anything wrong. The rest of the wolves turned to look at her, minus a few at the back. She looked over at Brighton, who seemed to understand what she was thinking, and he nodded at her. She took a deep breath. She herself was still coming to terms with what had happened. Um last week. She began. Something happened that, I'm still dealing with. But, it's something all of us are going to have to deal with at some point whenever we get out of here. So, as uncomfortable as this still is for me, I'm gonna tell you about it. She looked at Fletcher, who looked uncertain. But he nodded too. So she told them.